everybody. Come on in. I just finished making a video um, and posting it on my other YouTube channel, my other uh, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews channel. I just finished making a video over there for everybody to come over here for my uh, live review of Greenleaf. It's the season finale. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Excuse me. Bless me. But anywho, I hope you guys had all had a chance to watch the uh, review. I mean, watch the show. Um, it was really, really good. And also, um, again, I know I made several YouTube videos um, regarding the holidays. And again, I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Um, I hope you had plenty of fun with your family and friends and loved ones. And I hope all is well. All is well. And you didn't go broke. You didn't max out all those credit cards on Black Friday. I really hope you didn't. <laughs> but anyway, make sure you guys on your way in, make sure you uh, like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed to my channel. And also, please share this um, live. Share it on your notebook. Share it on your Twitter. You know, on your whatever social uh, media um, platforms that you have. Please share the video. But, again, um, we're going to be discussing Greenleaf, um, the season finale. It was season three, episode 11, and it was titled The New Life. Now, you guys, I want to make sure you understand it is okay to participate in the lives, in the chats. <laughs> I always have my phone number listed just in case somebody, you know, wants to call in and give their point of view on either a TV show we're discussing or a reality show, um, celebrity news, trending news, you know, whatever the topic is. So feel free to comment in the chat. Let me know you're here. Say hi. Hey, I'm here, you know. <laughs> or, um, you know, let me know how you feel about the show that we're discussing again, like I said. So with that being said, if you watched the finale of Greenleaf, let me know what you thought about the finale. Um, again, I thought it was really, really good, and I'm super anxious for season four of Greenleaf. But anywho, anywho, again, please like the video, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, and share the video to whatever social media platform that you use. But anywho, let's jump right into this review. Um, at the beginning of the, ep well, you know, on last episode, Basie had busted up into the bishops, you know, into his office, into the church, into Calvary, and he had pulled a gun out and had it pointed to his head and was making threats to basically blown his brains out, you know, in God's house. So at the beginning of this, uh, show, we see how Basie, he was still holding the gun to the bishop's head. And y'all, when Korean came busting through that door, I was like seriously holding my breath. I'm like, Basie must have turned around so smooth. He had that gun pointed at Bishop's head and turned around so smooth without even looking at Corinne and pointed that gun right in the middle of her forehead. Thanks to Bishop pleading, like desperately pleading to, to Basie, please don't kill her. Please don't shoot her. He let her go. She was freaking out. I just knew that she... It was a wrap. I just thought it was a wrap. I just, I really thought it was a wrap. But anywho, thanks to Bishop pleading with him, he let her go. She was able to run out of the church and, you know, go get help. But anywho, um, I thought Bishop was about to have a heart attack up in there. Like, seriously, he was like, oh my God, please don't kill her. Basie, please don't kill her. Just let her go. Let's let her go. You are not a killer. You are not a killer. And he proved that to him by basically... Basie didn't really come up in there to kill him. I mean, last episode, I was like, at the end of the episode, is he going to kill him? Is he just trying to threaten him? Is he really going to go through with it? But no, nah, mm -mm, he didn't do it. He ain't no killer. He's a thief. He's a thief. He's a crook. He's a gambler. He's a horrible gambler, but he ain't no murderer. <laughs> but then when Lady May came in there, after, you know, Corinne came and alerted everybody of what's going on, um, basically managed, they didn't show him escape, but he managed to get out of the, uh, pastor's office and managed to leave the church. Um, Lady May came up there, dropping to her knees, you know, at the bishop's feet, 
And she was so concerned and looking like she was about to lose her mind. And I was like, this has to be the moment. You know, I had a thought, like a, a really quick thought. Like this probably is the moment where she, where Lady May is going to be like regretting asking for a voice. Divorce, you know, you can just tell when she came into that room and she was just panicked, like panicked and worried and full of concern and you can just tell that she still really loves him, still really cares for him, even though the ink on their divorce papers isn't even dry yet. I just had a feeling like maybe this might be a turn of events for them. But anywho, anywho, uh, it hadn't even been even what seemed like an hour, you know, since Basie put that gun back in his holster, that Jacob received a phone call, you know, from Joseph. You remember Joseph? He's that accountant, had, you know, that uh, Triumph had hired because, you know, something, something was a little fishy with the paperwork, with the money, with the bank accounts. So, anywho, um, he was calling about the basically the church. Come to find out. Uh, basically stole the church right from under Jacob. I'm like, that son of a gun. I mean, I kept wondering what the end game was for Jacob because he lost the church because of the fact that he was gambling too much. And, you know, Jacob and them had to bail him out before the church found out that he had took all that money. So, anywho, you know what? They ended up losing the church. And so, Bishop, although, um... Although he didn't turn out to witness Lady May preach that morning, you know, when she, the Lady May Day or whatnot, he had heard about how great the sermon was and how moved the parishioners was. And, you know, with that, he decided, you know what? He's just going to bow out gracefully. You know, him and Lady May been going back and forth. You know, who's going to run the church? Who's more suited to run the church? She kept throwing up his infidelities in his face and all that. But Lady May, she had infidelities of her own. And you saw that at the end of the last episode. I mean, we already knew that she had stepped out on the bishop years and years ago. But it was in revenge because she had found out the bishop had slept with her sister, Mavis. And so she had stepped out on him and slept with Lionel. The bishop knew that, but you know what? I think he was just tired of fighting. And after running into that, you know, that incident with Basie and having a gun pulled to his head, and I think he realized life was just too short, just much too short. So he was like, you know what, May May, you know what, May Lady May, you know, um, you can have a church. You can have a church. Just, just take it. Just take it. Go with God. Go with God. Go with Jesus. <laughs> and Lady May was ecstatic. She was like happy as heck. But you know what? Um, not so fast. <laughs> not so fast, Lady May. Um, the bishop board had been trying to get Grace to oversee and lead the church for a while now. Um, and she kept, you know, refusing. But Sister Connie kept coming at her. And Grace kept turning down the offer. But in the midst of all this drama and the new drama that's been going on with the church, Grace is looking better and better to the committee and to the bishop board as, you know, the person that they would like to run the church. No more Lady May. No more Bishop. They is basically, you know, tired and through. They just <laughs> that's how they feel like they is tired and through. We need some new, um, a new leader in this church. So at that time, you know, when they put the offer on the table, she at least said, you know what? I guess I'll think about it. You know, I'll think about it. And so, you know what? At that time I was like, Lord Jesus, I just can't wait to see Lady May's reaction. And Lord, when Grace and Lady May were taking a stroll around their property, Lady May, she was all excited and telling Grace how anxious she was to let the bishops know of her plans, you know, to take over the church since, you know, Bishop, he was like, you know, he gave her her, his grace, you know, take the church, Lady May. I don't want it anymore, Lady May. Just take the church, Lady May. <laughs> so she was telling Grace, you know what? I cannot wait to meet up with the bishops this evening so I can tell them that I will be leading the church. And so Grace was like, um, uh, mother, 
mother, there is something I have to tell you. Y'all saw, y'all saw Lady May. She already knew something was wrong. She was like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> and Grace told her the bishop's decision. You know, for her to actually pass through the church, to actually leave the church. And man, when Lady May heard that, she started spitting fire and brimstone. I mean, she was pissed. Not like she ain't always pissed at Grace anyway, but this just topped the cake. This just took the cake. And Lady May was like, okay, you know what? I got this. But also, did Grace have to, at that time, reveal the truth of the paternity results? I'm like, come on, you just slapped her over the head. Now you're about to knock her down with some more news. Um, I kind of figured, I, you know, for a minute, I kind of figured that Lionel was the father of Grace. Just because of the strong difference in the skin complexion of the siblings. Now, don't 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 get me wrong now. Don't get it twisted. I'm black. I understand that sometimes the skin complexion has nothing to do with what your mother or father may look like. Uh, for example, my mother is about my complexion, about um, my brother right below me. He is high yellow, like high yellow. You would think he's mixed. Um, then the brother below him, he is dark, like probably four tones darker than me. So we all are different shades. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it doesn't matter. But in this case, in this case, I had a big feeling that Grace's father was Lionel and I was correct and I was correct. But, um... Uh, Grace, I mean, uh, Lady May, question, do y'all think that Lady May really knew that as well? I mean, she had to have at least have a small doubt about the paternity of Grace, you know, about her father. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Church folks are some of the main ones who sweep stuff under the rug and try to leave it there to die and to never be seen again. Um, May, she basically didn't want Grace to allow anybody else in on that revelation. Y'all, Lady May, she is a hot mess. If y'all don't know that by now, let me tell you, she is a hot mess. And this is exactly, exactly why I kept saying that she doesn't deserve to leave that church. She would not be a good leader. She would not be a good pastor. I mean, you out there cheating on your husband. I mean, having a child possibly by another man. Always turning your nose up on other people and their sins, no matter how big or small. But you always want to keep your stuff hidden. You know, hidden from, you know, the sun, from the light. But anyway, everything in the dark eventually comes to the light. We all know that. But then, you know what? That Connie, you know, the Connie, when they was at the, uh, when they was on the, um, at the meeting, that Connie, she reminds me of somebody in my church. <laughs> when Lady May sat down in that meeting, acting like she was blind to the fact that they have no need for her. Connie was like, are you insane, Lady May? You walk in here wasting our time with this big old spill about, you know, you running the church and all that kind of stuff. Um, We have a petition signed by over 2,000 signatures of the parishioners demanding that Bishop James and Lady May needs to get to stepping off the pulpit. <laughs> get to stepping off the pulpit but y'all are welcome y'all are most welcome to still sit in the pews on sunday and receive a word from whatever pastor we hire after you guys step down now lady may she looked like she wanted to snatch connie right up out that chair i mean lady may she she she's a character she's a character but why i don't know why and y'all let me know if y'all feel this way too. I could be reaching. You know, sometimes I do be reaching. But why do I get the feeling that Connie has a vendetta against Lady May? And or maybe the bishop as well. Did y'all get that? 
Like, did y'all think she was, like, really, really harsh? Like, she might have went overboard a little bit. Maybe a little... She was, she was kind of mean. She was kind of mean to Lady May. Don't y'all think? Or is that just me? I don't know. I think she was. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, anywho, anywho, we shall see. But one thing I have to say is, I would have never thought that Lady May would have actually invited Bishop to move back into the house, back into the big house. <laughs> um, after, you know, after they've been, since they've been divorced, I should say, um, after, and after revealing the paternity results of Grace's real father to the Bishop, you know what? She even admitted to the Bishop that she already knew. Now y'all might not have caught that. I actually had to rewind it a little bit because I'm like, hold up. What'd she say? What'd she just say? When he had asked her, well, okay, she had revealed, you know, the paternity or whatever. And when he said, he basically didn't give her the reaction that she thought he would give. So she was like, that's all? That's all you got to say? After I revealed the biggest secret, you know, in my entire life? And he was like, well, it wasn't really a secret, was it? And that's when, you know, she was still kind of crying then. And she was like, whispered, no, no. She knew. She knew. I was like, it's about darn time. Because she had to, like I kept saying in several episodes, she had to have thought it was a possibility. She had to have thought that it was some kind of possibility, a big possibility. I mean, at least a 50-50 chance that Lionel might be Grace's father. You know what I'm saying? It was a 50-50 chance, at least. At least. And she finally, finally admitted it. I just couldn't believe it. I was really... <laughs> so what do y'all think about that? Uh-oh, uh-oh, it looks like I'm buffering. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. It looks like I'm buffering. <laughs> but anywho, anywho, hopefully this um, video will stop buffering real soon. Can y'all see me okay? Okay, I'm gonna have to. Okay, I don't know. Y'all need to let me know if I'm still buffering. Before I continue. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it's I'm trying to see if I'm still buffering. Okay, I think I'm good. I think we good, y'all. I think we good. Y'all need to let me know if we still buffering or not. <laughs> let me know if we still buffering or not, y'all. That was a minute. That was a long buffer. <laughs> but anywho, where was I at? Um, I think I had stopped off with... Uh, hmm. Lady May. Oh, yeah. Lady May. She had just revealed to the bishop that, you know, the uh, paternity results of Grace's real father. And Bishop was like, when he didn't respond to her the way that she thought he would, she was like, is that it? You ain't got nothing to say. That's all after I didn't just gave you, I didn't just reveal the biggest secret in my entire life. And the bishop was like, um, 
But was it really was a secret? It really wasn't a secret, was it? And that's when she was like, you know, she was still crying and everything. And she whispered, no. And I was like, it's about darn time. Finally, she gets it off her chest because she should have known. I kept saying she should have known that it was a big possibility. I mean, at least a 50-50 chance, 50-50% chance of Lionel being Grace's father. But she spent all these years not trying to find out and letting Grace think that the bishop is her father and of course letting the bishop think that Grace is her his daughter. So anyway, anyway, at least she finally got it off her chest. But the bishop was like, you know what? We finally even. We finally even. But then about Basie. Um it looks like Basie and them is headed to Cancun. Um at least him and Rochelle are. I can't believe that they did all of that for two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, okay, to a lot of us who are not rich, that might seem a lot of money. But how far can two hundred thousand dollars take you? How far? Not far at all. So I wonder what are the plans for them once they reach Cancun. And it looks like Tasha might not be tagging along this time. She's actually decided to stay and work with the FBI and they are going, you know, they are willing to cut her a deal. But that big black dude, the one that was in the store standing behind Basie sneering at him, I was like, is he working with the FBI or um, is he maybe somebody that Basie owed money to? Because keep in mind, Basie... He, he was a gambler. He was addicted to gambling. He was a horrible gambler. He gambled away all his money with him and his wife, you know, with Tasha. They were broke. He gambled all the church's money. Um, and I do believe, I do believe that he borrowed money, you know, and he owed people. So I don't know. What y'all think? That big black dude, he looked real scary and stuff, standing behind Basie. And then when Basie went outside the store, you know, I was like, okay, okay, I, I really think this is probably not the FBI, probably not the FB to the I, because whoever it was, you know, they stormed out of that store right after Basie, they jumped in the truck, they peeled out and was burning rubber trying to chase Basie and Rochelle down, so... Hopefully, at the beginning of season four, <laughs> we'll find out who the heck he was or who he was representing. But um, also, tell me what y'all think about this. Uh, Lionel left Grace $3 million and didn't leave her brother Aaron one red cent. Nothing. He left him absolutely nothing. Um, do y'all think it was because he was gay? I'm assuming that is probably correct because Aaron was like, you know what? Okay, he left you $3 million. I could care less. If he couldn't give me his love and respect that I deserved when he was alive, then I don't want his money. I don't want nothing from this man. I, he don't care if he raised him and didn't raise Grace. He didn't care. You know, what's money? I mean, to some people, like, hey, maybe me. I'm like, hey, give me that money. I don't care. It's Christmas season two. It's Christmas season two, and my son's got a long old list for Santa. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be like, huh, okay, I, I'll take him. I, I'll take that money. Shoot. Sure. I'll take rest in peace, pops. Rest in peace. <laughs> but anywho, anywho, he was like, you know what? I don't care about that money. Hey, you know what? It's, it's over and done with. But anywho, um, you know what? Uh, the white dude named Bob, the one who um, was in the meeting with Grace. Somehow, I have a really bad feeling about him also. Like, why is he trying so hard to uh, try to get Grace to preach or minister? I'm, okay, basically, they're trying to tell her what she should minister and preach about once she takes that pulpit something just didn't seem right to me something just didn't set right to me about that man so i i don't know we shall see but anywho um 
Grace, she actually tried to give her father the bishop. You know, her father, uh, well, you know, not her real father, because Lionel's her real father, we found out. But, you know, he's still her father. He told her, he said, you know what? Um, some people live in the flesh. Some people live in the spirit. Our family don't live in the flesh. We live in the spirit. So in the spirit, you are still my daughter. 100%. I'm your father. It don't matter whose blood you have running through your veins. I'm your father. So that really, you know, made her feel good and made her, you know, know that her father is still going to treat her the same, just as he always have. And so she tried to give him that money that her real father, Lionel, left her in his will. It was $3 million. And so that leads me to wonder... If the taxes were ever actually paid off from the scam, from the scandal that Basie and Rochelle, you know, were plotting, um, because that's $3 million, that would help cover, you know, what the Greenleaf owed to the IRS. So I don't know. I don't know if the, if the money was paid off or not, because you do recall the bishop has saw some money in his account, but I'm thinking after all of the investigation and the accounting and the FBI and da 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 da, I'm thinking maybe whatever money the bishop had in his account from that scandal, maybe the FBI confiscated it. Is holding it, you know, until they go to court or, you know, I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I guess I guess he'll end up taking it. It didn't really say um if he's gonna take it, you know, he didn't he didn't really talk about it, if he's going to take the money or not. But I'm just going to assume that next season, it'll probably show that he ended up taking the money and they ended up paying off the IRS. But when it finally came time for the bishop's final sermon, um, when he started staggering and fell to the floor, I was like, no freaking way. This cannot be how this season is supposed to end. Like, I was really sad. Like, I'm up there like... <laughs> No, the bishop can't be dead. <laughs> well, he was laying there, and I was like, just laying on the on the pulpit. Like I thought he was dead. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I still need me some more bishop. <laughs> I'm like, I still need me some more bishop. But then to see him walk out into the dining room while everybody else, the rest of the family, was sitting around the you know the big table in the dining room. And he sat down at the head of the table like he should. I was like, oh, okay, okay, y'all got me. That was when I realized I must be too invested into this show. <laughs> because I was really sad. Like, no, the bishop, I understand he got Parkinson's disease. But um, this cannot be the end of bishop. Not yet. Not quite. Not yet. But anywho. Out of this entire season, y'all, I think the highlight of the entire season, and y'all let me know y'all highlight of the entire season, but the highlight of my entire season might be possibly when Bishop had requested Lady May to try to work things out with her daughter, Grace, and she agreed. And she actually, you know, she agreed to it, but she actually went through with it. Like, at the end of the episodes, you know, she was talking to Grace and telling her, you know, she want to make amends. She's sorry. She's apologized. She wants to work with her, you know. And I was like, okay, all right. You know, because i never seen that coming. I mean, the way she treated her daughter. Um, I'm hoping that in a new season... She'll still keep at that and let all her old behavior die with Lionel. Because I honestly think that she treated Grace that way so badly. Because, like, when she told her this last episode, if she... No, what which episode was that? I think that was episode three. When she told her, if you weren't family, you wouldn't even be living in this house. I mean, she talked to her so negatively, so bad over, you know, the past few seasons. And I think it was mainly because... She knew in her heart that that was Lionel's daughter. She knew in her heart, but she could never reveal it. She was too ashamed. And I think that's all it was, was to, to her, Grace meant shame. I think that's what it meant. I don't even understand why she even called her Grace. I think it was maybe possibly because, you know, when we sin, when we do something wrong, you know, those who believe in God, uh, when we sin and do something wrong, you know, in the New Testament, when Jesus died for our sins, basically, you know, 
He bestowed grace upon us, mercy upon us, forgiveness upon us. And I think that's why she named her grace. Basically, you know, reminding her that God most likely forgave her for her sins when she slept with Lionel. But again, she might have named her grace, but she sure didn't treat her gracefully. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we'll see how it goes in season four. But y'all let me know. Please let me know in the comments, in the chat, um, how y'all feel about this finale. And let me know what your thoughts are about the different characters. And also let me know what you think might happen in season four. So feel free to put it all in the chat. And remember, after this live is over, you can still hit me up in the comment section. I'll get your notifications and I can still comment back and forth with you in the comment section. So in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, make sure you stay blessed, be safe. And oh, oh, one more thing before I end. One more thing. Please make sure I put it in the chat. I almost forgot. I put the link in the chat of our uh, Facebook group. It's called Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. So make sure you click on that link. It'll take you to Facebook and you can request to join our group and I will add you to the group. And also, matter of fact, let me go over here. Hold on. Okay, let's see. I just want to put this other link in here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm about to put the link in here to my other YouTube channel. Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And also, you can follow me on Instagram, Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. And also, I'm on Twitter at Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. So keep that in mind. Make sure you follow me on my different social sites. Make sure you subscribe to my other YouTube channel. And the link is in the chat, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And in the meantime and in between time, stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out.